<laughs> this is a very auspicious time because we have two eclipses this month. Eclipses have their symbolism, but one being lunar, one being solar, and what happens with that, what sign we're in at that time is a part of all this. So in a sense, you, you know, I believe that the beginning of every year, we look at it as launching a new life. Let's start the year saying goodbye to the past with the fall and winter months, and then let's launch into a new year. So to me, every new year is an auspicious time. But every so often, we have planetary alignments that are hugely auspicious. Sometimes we've had, you know, grand trines or we've had grand crosses astrologically. Um, the time of 2012 was a major shift. And people think, well, maybe it's not so major if we didn't all disappear and ascend or whatever. No, that's not true at all. Look at the world. What astrology is doing is not doing something to you. It's showing you what is happening around you. And then you make the choices to step into that groove and get it or not. So this, this lion's gate is very, very, very powerful. They call it lion's gate, which I'll explain in just a second. But um, it's, it's Leo, you know, we're in Leo. But, but um, here we have a, a partial lunar eclipse happening tomorrow. Then we have a complete solar eclipse just a couple weeks later. And the lunar eclipse will be here in, in uh, Leo. Then we're going to have the solar eclipse in Aquarius. And, and there's all kinds of tricky and cool stuff about that. Each of those has its own place. But um, before I, I launch into that the rest of the way, there's other things happening. This is all marked out in the book of Revelation, not, not in the creepy stories you hear from some traditions, but some very deep mystical traditions, teachings in the book of Revelation that tell us the time we're clicking through. So there's some pieces of that that are very, very, very interesting. Um, that we're kind of walking parallel with and, and in alignment with. Um, but also, we had our change of the millennium. We had our 2012. We had our 1111 gateway at one time, the harmonic con convergence. You know, all these major things happening, really starting in like 1988-ish, that double-digit 88. And now they call this the 888 alignment. But because eight's an interesting number because it's your, a karmic number. So if you're going through an eight personally, if you are an eight personally, you've been sometimes married eight years or partnered for eight years, or sometimes it's the, the, the number of the year we're in collectively. That number is always very interesting, but the number means purging out as much stuff as possible so that you reach the nine, which is the highest of the single digit in numerology. The nine is the ending, and then everything starts again with one. But nine is like, yes, we've reached the pinnacle. Other than master numbers, nine's that highest number. Once you go to 10, you add one and zero and you're back to one again. So that's how numerology works. But eight, eight is the clearing out before you get to nine because you don't want to take the yucky stuff with you to the nine, metaphorically, right? So, so that's part of what's happening here. We're entering you know, this eighth month and this Leo thing and all these other alignments. And there's still the year 2038, is another key that nobody's talking about yet because most of them don't know about it. But 2038 is finally where the Great Pyramid reaches its ending because all of the years, essential years of mankind for the last 10,000 years are mapped out in the Great Pyramid through measurements, not carvings or paintings or words or symbols. It's mapped out in, in pyramid inches, they call it. So all of time is, is noted in the Great Pyramid. There's, for example, a hallway. You go so far through that hallway and it marked the beginning of the Depression that we, you know, years ago, the Great Depression. There's World War I. Just by the change of shape of hallways, where the war starts, where it ends. Where the next war starts, where it ends. You enter the Great Pyramid, the King's Chamber, and that's where all the measurements change because there's the great cosmic speed up. So X number of inches that used to take, X number of years that used to take so many inches measured in the pyramid, all of a sudden it starts going much faster. More is covered in less time, which is exactly what started happening on Earth. Jesus tells Helen, who wrote A Course in Miracles, you're entering what we call the great cosmic speed up. So there's something significant happening. And we enter the great uh, the king's chamber, and all of a sudden, it's like sky's the limit because you're walking this narrow hall, and all of a sudden, you duck down to get in there, which means humility, and then it opens up. And if you were to measure, and they did, they measured and asked Edgar Cayce, 
We followed this measurement to the back of the king's chamber and it ends around 1970 or 70-something. Is that when man, you know, in history, when mankind comes to an end, the world comes to an end? Casey said, no, you have to go up the wall. Telling them, here's how many more years beyond the 70s. And when you get to the top of the wall, that's when it comes to a major change. So whatever changes you thought were going to happen at the change of the millennium, whatever thoughts you know you had or uh, beliefs you had about changes in the 2012, mark that and double it, triple it, quadruple it, and so on when we get to 2038. To be much, much more grand in whatever's going to happen. And our job is to say whether that's 2038, 2055, 3018, or today, what are you doing along the path? What are you, you know, don't wait for it and say, I'll do my amends about an hour before it all comes to a close. It doesn't work. You know, people do that all the time. Like, we'll, we'll get a priest to come to your bedside so you can kind of clear things. That doesn't work. You know, this, this, people on the other side are not dumb. They're like, well, you only cough that stuff out because you're afraid of what's on the other side. And all that's on the other side is you. So if you didn't have it together, you know, then you're going to be back and do this again. So we have to take a, a bit of an inventory. What are your last thoughts when you pass over? Is it going to be, you know, Jesus says in A, in a Course in Miracles, it should be taking your breath and knowing that you are now going to rest for a job well done. Can you say that? Can you say, wow, not I was going to. Can you really say I made a difference? Well, but I'm not the globally big kind of person. In your house, in your neighborhood, I mean, just the people you meet, did you make a difference? Um, those, those last thoughts, if today's the last day, if the eclipses mean this or 2038 means that, where do you stand with things? Um, I wrote down a couple of, uh, I remember over time hearing and picking up a couple things. This is sort of an aside to what I'm sharing today, but last words before certain people passed away. Humphrey Bogart, I should never have switched from scotch to martinis. <laughs> Beethoven, who remember became deaf, now I will hear heaven. Oh. Leonard Nimoy, his last words. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Who knows the last words of Steve Jobs? Raise your hand if you know. You mind? I think it was just wow, wow, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right. Can you imagine? That's how we should be feeling about life. Not just the contrast between this world and spirit world, but you know he had to see something cool. Oh, wow. I just think that's great. And I think one of the funniest and best I've ever heard, Buddy Rich, jazz musician, right? The nurse was prepping him for the surgery he would go into, and I believe pass away in that surgery, but the nurse was prepping him. And she was wondering, are there medica medications you can? You remember that, you know, that question? Are there any medications you, you know? So she said, is there anything you can't take? He said, yeah, country music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now if I was on the other side and that was my line, I'd be proud of that, man. It'd be like, God, I came up with a good one, didn't I? You know? <laughs> um, and, and one more, I remember hearing about this, the comedian Sam Kinison, the screaming comedian, that was his shtick, you know, he would just be screaming, all his punchlines. He was in a car accident, getting from Vegas to LA. Um, somebody, I don't remember if drunk or something else, but they were, they started, they steered, or asleep or drunk, they steered into his lane and killed him in a car accident. He was with his girlfriend, I think. But he, he's on the side of the road and he's, he's dead. But um, everybody's trying to figure out what's what and who's what, who, where and, you know, bodies and what are we going to do? It's all the disturbance and people are pulling over. And he actually got up. He actually got up and was talking to himself and tried to picture what's happening. He gets up and he starts trying to move around because he's trying to get kind of acclimated, like, wh where am I? And he starts hearing what? He starts saying out loud, what? To somebody, What? Oh, oh, okay, okay, and he laid back down and died. Can you kind of intuit what was happening there? It was like, dude, what? You're dead, lay down. Oh, okay. You know? 
I mean, something like that. I'm paraphrasing, but some, you know, you know, he's seeing something. You know, like Job's going, wow, he's seeing something. So our life needs to be something that when we cross over, we're proud of what we've done. Not everything we've done, it's how did you end up at the end of the day? It's okay that we've made mistakes. What have you done at the end of the day? This alignment called the, you know, uh, the lion's gate is, is uh, happens typically, you know, the eighth of this month. And so it's, it's already kind of a known alignment and the eight, eight concept. But what's unique is here we not only have it, in, you know, Leo and then have it in Aquarius, but what's one of the unique things is that this alignment happens to the um, galactic center. You know, so we're, we're, we're lining up with um, uh, Sagittarius, the galactic center is Sagittarius. We're aligning with this time in Leo, and this is the Earth as well. Sagittarius means reaching for the stars, head for higher stuff, right? And then Leo and its symbolism with the Christ consciousness. So just the stars, just the alignments is all about like, guys, take it to another level, but not of self. Take your lives to another level, but dedicate it to God. Like, don't just make this an alignment about you. Take this to another level. You know, shoot for the stars, the whole Sagittarius piece. And, and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter means... Uh, Jupiter means also Zeus or Zeus Pitar, which means God the Father. So this concept that we're, we're shooting, you know, we're heading, aiming towards the galactic center in Sagittarius and that it's ruled by Jupiter. It's all about, make this about God. Aim your teachings, aim your poems, aim your child raising, aim your partnerships. Bring it all more to a dedication of God instead of just, well, I'm just kind of improving myself. I mean, I'm glad anybody that would be improving themselves. I mean, that's, that's obviously a good thing. But just take it to another level. Let spirit raise the bar on the whole experience. So when we're, when we're dealing with the uh, eclipse, starting with a partial eclipse, you know, this is like, okay, a partial eclipse in Leo. It's time to let go, release old patterns. And you don't have to just hear me, even as I say it. Just here inside of your mind, and so it is. Let go of old belief systems, old patterns, old structures of any kind, even genetic bloodline stuff, karmic relationships. It's time to release this to another level. Just hear those words, and so it is. It's about preparing for new beginnings, and so it is. Here I am, God. Unlimited potentials, here I am. Downloading greater preparations, you know, download greater preparation. Let the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, start downloading, like, like unplugging the way you think, your brain, literally the neurons in the mind, and start plugging in new ones. She can do that. The Divine Mother can do that. The Holy Spirit of God can do that. It knows exactly which ones would be best for your highest good. So call on them. Here I am. Not here I am, but let me know and run everything by me because I have to decide which changes I'd like to accept. Try living dangerously. Do you want to wait until you die and then go, your last words are blah, 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 and you got nowhere and you're nothing but afraid of tomorrow? It's got to be like, I left this place better than when I arrived. And even if I've only touched one person, that is huge because you don't know. Uh, here, here's a quick example. Um, I saw this gal, um, we were looking to buy something for Unity here, and this gal advertised that she was selling it. So, at like a yard sale or whatever she was having, an estate sale or something, and so she advertised that she was having that. So, we went there to pick, you know, to ask if this was available and, and purchase this thing. So, you know, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm a bit early, you know, I'm, so I'm just hanging out out front, you know, and I can read or, you know, just hang out or something, you know, so I'm just waiting. and. Usually when I see people like that, I'll ask, you know, I said, let me know if you need a hand moving stuff around and all that, especially she's by herself. And she said, no, it's okay. She couldn't see me, but I was talking through my door, uh, my car. So I just wait a little while longer. And then I see that she's kind of needing help, but she's just not asking. She's moving tables and big objects. And so I got out and I made it more casual and walked up and I said, well, you know, how's it going? And just chat, you know? And I got only one sentence in and she looks at me and she says, are you Michael? And I said, yeah. She says, Michael, I'm your dad. 
And she starts tearing up. And I'm like, what? She's going, wow. She goes, I have some incredible stories to tell you. And I'm summarizing, and I can't get exactly what this person's feeling, so I'm not saying that I know exactly what she's feeling inside. From what I gathered, at best of my summary, she said, Michael, I've lived here for three years, and the people in this town, especially the teachers, they keep talking about themselves and not God. And she said, and I started, you know, when I got here, I heard about Unity of Sedona, and she said, but that was a weird period because you had a couple people that were there trying to kind of take over unity. So I thought, I don't want any part of that sort of thing. So she said, I stayed away. And she said, so I stayed away and it's been three years. And this town, in a way, she's saying, she was very beautiful about it. She said, I've learned what I needed. I feel great. But she's aware. She said, the arrogance, the, the ego in this town is tremendous. And she said, and she's tearing up and all that. And she said, so I never went to the unity. And she said, but... Last Sunday, I saw your online service. And she said, and it meant everything to me. You have no idea what it meant to me. She said, and you talked about God being given the role of, of guiding us. Instead of us, it's God. And so that whole piece that was kind of missing for her in Sedona, in one sitting, she got it. Now, now that was because what? Because... Um, I'm an amazing teacher. <laughs> or is it that we co-created? Because if I, if I were an amazing teacher, the most amazing teacher on the planet, but you guys thought I was terrible and we didn't have a good rapport and you didn't allow me to teach about God, A, I wouldn't be here, B, you wouldn't be getting that, and C, she wouldn't have seen it. So even if you're just an attendee thinking, well, I'm just there and I listen to Michael, just this thing where God gets a priority at this place that we've co-created changed the lives of one person. Just, just that one moment. There's many people, but there's one. Now, they're moving, you know, somewhere else, and you don't think they're going to take that with them? You don't think they're going to go, it's not all teachers that think of themselves more than God. There are teachers. Now, you think, okay, kind of cool. And I'm just like, you know, some of the examples and stories she was telling me, I mean, I was fighting back the tears. It was just such deep things that she was sharing. And I'm like, wow. So all that is done. And then um, it's kind of funny because these couple of gals walk up and they're going, well, we're looking for some things very important to us, but uh, the sale's not open yet, so we're leaving. And I'm like, no, 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 listen. You know, come on, I got an inside here over here. <laughs> so come with me. And I kind of introduce her to them, uh, them to her and... They ended up buying half of everything in the house. So that little weird connection that maybe was partly put into my lap because of what this woman said that made me sit there with awe, right? And maybe karmically helping her over this. Lastly, as I'm getting ready to leave, I hear the woman who's running this, uh, this sale talking to those two people saying, yes, and he's the guy over at Unity of Sedona. And they're going, okay, we're gonna put him in our phone so we can watch him online from now on. We haven't, the sale hasn't even started. So when you think you only affect one person, watch. When people have said to you, be aware and live your life as though angels were in the room. Treat people as though they're angels as best you can. You know, be aware because you never know what comes from that. All beings, messenger, you know, the word angel means messenger. All people are messengers. And they're, they have their own issues, you know. And this, this woman was reassuring me saying, you know, Michael, uh, when you guys you know, went through that a few years back, she said there's a few people that had, had issues. She said, you're, you're just mirroring God to them, Christ to them, and that's intimidating. So they started throwing stones. I said, thank you. I appreciate you having the patience and the open-mindedness to see that. So she turned and in a sense gave me some clarity, greater clarity and support. You don't know, man. One, one conversation, whatever it's going to be, you just, you know, there's no way to know what effect you're going to have. So during this time, it's an auspicious time, mostly generically speaking, more clearing out the old and more preparing for the new. But first of all, do it as thoroughly as you can. It means patterns and old systems. This is so deep and cosmic that it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like if you're gonna do a surgery on someone. How sterile and prepared is the environment? You see, how, how good are the tools we're using? How high is the technology of what's needed to do the best job? That's what it's like. We're going to uh, globally go through a surgery, but we have to prep for it. 
We have to make this the right and best place for this. So it's up to us. If we're carrying old stuff and we're going, well, I'm just going to push that one back and just go, here we are, let's, wow, let's all chant together. Let's all ascend. It doesn't work like that. You can only rise as thoroughly, as far and thoroughly as you are willing to descend into the stuff and clear it. So this beautiful eclipse, you know, happening in Leo, you know, the Leo can be a sign of the pride. You know, it could be like, it, I'm not saying we're prideful if we're Leos. I'm saying it is a sign of pride. It could be the, the, the show person. Here I am. Even though people think that's Leo, often Leo is a little bit shy and almost prefers to be the person behind the person. That's often the case. But it does represent, represent here I am. You know, it can represent that. So who's the I that you're presenting as you're doing the lunar eclipse? What's being eclipsed and what sign are we in and what's happening? Let me clear the pride. Let me clear the lower self, but also the things that keep me from being able to come out fully in a great way, which means my old patterns, gen even genetics. Clear it. You are not the genetics of your family. To think so is just like saying, I'm made up of my karma. Okay, how proud do you want to be of that? You know, I mean, do you want to make a list of all your wrongdoings for every lifetime and then tell us why you are what you are because of those lifetimes? The point of it is to clear it. What, what is God if God isn't grace? And what is grace if it isn't a gift to us to, to grab hold of? So I, I don't want to be this sign or that sign or this genetic or that genetic. I'm just here to do my best to live the presence of God. And that's for all of us. And then coming forward, that, 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 wow, the eclipse of, uh, in Aquarius, a, f a full solar eclipse. I mean, the solar is the sun of God, the, the Christ self. Okay, here I go. Well, no, man. Did you clear very well back at the, you know, lunar eclipse? Go back and do some more work then. Don't be prepared. Don't think you just launch without doing the internal work first. So clear things out, you know. Clean self up and come into that level of, beautiful level of humility. Then we say, okay, now I need to go through some solar eclipsing. And this is in Aquarius. Keywords for Aquarius, all the signs have keywords. I desire, I feel, I know. There's two, you know, a couple keywords for every sign of the zodiac. The one for Aquarius is often, I know. The problem is, I know everything. Versus, I know. Now there's a difference, watch. I know everything versus oh, I know. One of them comes from God. It's like, I get it. But it comes from God, not I know. I of my ego self know. That's not something to be proud of. Oh, I know. So we surrender. And it's beautiful that we have Leo ready to surrender to the Aquarian. And then the fact that we have Leo and Aquarius being eclipsed this month is really auspicious because <clears throat> this also symbolizes a time 12,000 years ago when Aquarius and Leo were in direct alignment overhead of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And they haven't been in alignment with that since. Orion, overhead of, of Giza, directly overhead. So it's like this is 12,000 years later. We once had one of the two signs overhead 12,000 years ago. Now it's the opposite and the other. They're opposing signs, as it's sometimes called. Now the other is directly overhead, Aquarius. Leo was there, and why do you think we have the Sphinx, which is half man and half lion? Because the builders 12,000 years ago, don't listen to the lunatics on History Channel telling you it's 3,000 years old. 12,000 years ago, these people put this together to hold the Hall of Records. And the Sphinx out front was a lion and a man because they're saying, we are closing up this temple and the Hall of Records now during the sign of Leo, and it will be opened in 12,000 years in the sign of Aquarius, which came in in the year 2012. And it takes time for that to kick in. But what's happening then is those star systems, those planets, those alignments, those signs of the zodiac are all playing an auspicious role. Not just because uh, we're talking about a, a site, a sacred site on planet Earth. The Pyramid of Giza is planted right on the crown chakra of this planet. 
What we attract to our planet in codes and light codes and frequencies comes through Giza and comes out to the other chakras and feeds humanity. It's not something you see, but it's something subtle yet powerful. So when we had an 1111 gateway opening through Orion, we had all kinds of light infusion coming from the higher dimensions. Arcturus and other places, you know, and, and also this uh, alignment we're in right now this month is also aligned with the star system Sirius. And Sirius is the place where many ancient cultures, including the, the uh, Hindu and so forth, they say that we used to get guidance from the gods that taught us how to live on earth and how to become enlightened. But the beings that talk to them, they say, came from Sirius. So we're, we're aligning with the star system Sirius, which is a major influence in mankind's spiritual growth. And as I was saying, Arcturus and these other systems, they're all aligning. Things are happening to infuse the earth with more light, which is why people on earth keep going through such dualistic fights to prevent this from happening. So this, this uh, solar eclipse that's going to happen in a few weeks is going to go, it's very rare, it's going to go from the northwest to the southeast of our country, right across the country. It's like it's an angelic blessing being passed to our country to say, now more than ever, you people who are divided between male and female and this candidate and that candidate and this and that and the other, they're still fighting about that stuff. It's like, at what point do you just learn acceptance? But no, no, let's keep fighting about it. So here comes a blessing to go from country, one side of the country to the other. And that blessing is to say, grow up and get ready to be the elder to the other countries of the world. You're supposed to be, I know some people don't like the idea, you're supposed to be the elder brother, which brings back a whole story from Adam and Eve when one child kills another. And God says to the one, where's your brother? And he says, what am I, my brother's keeper? I don't know. But he had killed him. His conscience tried to refuse knowing where his brother was. We're told you have to turn it around. During the time of Edgar Cayce, when racism was still rampant, they asked him to do readings on that subject. And he said, people need to learn that they are their brother's keeper. And in A Course in Miracles, we're told now, you will never attain Christ consciousness without bringing everybody else with you. You can't exclude and say, I'm, I'm Christed, too bad for you. You're only Christed in your ability to see Christ in others. And for some people, that's a major inconvenience you got to be kidding me. But you don't know the people I've known. All the more that if you can see Christ in them, look how much higher you rise in consciousness. So these planetary configurations and alignments are not doing to you, but they are symbolizing what you're already ready for, and you have to decide whether you're going to get on board. Some people have described this thing that's happening, these uh, uh, eclipses this month, as a big wave that's coming. And as I've always used the analogy, the best idea is to start paddling now and ride the wave. Don't complain about it after the wave plows you over and say, I didn't know there was a wave coming. I'm, I'm sorry, did you not hear the, you know, the sound of it coming? Did you not feel what you feel when a wave's coming? Could you not look and see and have, make sure how's life going? Oh, look, a wave. I mean, people told you about it. You weren't listening because people want to live small. They want to stay small. As it's been said by many teachers over many, many years, people are more afraid of their light than their darkness. And that was made very popular from A Course in Miracles. People are more afraid of God than their ego, it says. And then it uses other analogies or metaphors for that. So this wave, imagine going right across our country. Why? To divide it? No. To give it a blessing from end to end to say, guys, you are divided. Now come together. So. A lot of us do this. We say, well, okay, cool. I'll come together. I'll, I'm willing to do that as long as it's done this way. As long as it's our group that leads the coming together. Let's all hold hands across the country. Well, I don't want to hold your hand. I'm going to get somebody else in there. It, you can't have the one without the other. You've got to heal all the stuff that creates the rift. So please do everything you can to see through the games of the ego, the voices of the ego, you know, that, that say excluding anyone. It's not that you have to go overboard and, and overly force yourself to love if you can't yet forgive something and it's a bit hard. That's okay. Just say, I'll do it tomorrow. It's okay. Set it as a goal tomorrow. Don't shame yourself because that won't help your growth. But recognize 
I am here, and I'm here for one purpose only, to be what God created me to be. Okay, that's a great affirmation. How do I do that? Forgiveness. Not just others. Forgive all the freaky things you've done. Forgive the times you were creepy. You know, forgive the times you were sad and lonely and hurt and in a place of despair. You know, forgive it all. Don't say, well, I'll forgive it all, but I don't want to think about that one thing. That's the one to especially bring forward. The one you want to not think about. Yeah, but you don't know where I've been. Oh, yeah. You know, I read the writing in the bathroom walls in the men's room, you know. Uh, we've all heard. No, I'm kidding. We've all heard. Um, no, it's, it's when you go and sit at your life flashing before your eyes, your, your judgment day, let's call it, at the end of this life, how are you going to do? Don't you say, well, I've done my best with pride, humility. Just say, wow, who have I been? What have I been? If the stars judge me, if they shine their rays on me, do they find me clean? If the light of God shines on me, does it, does it find me clean? Now, that doesn't mean I have to perfect myself. Clean means if I expose even the darkest recesses of myself and the light shines on it, you won't see any dark recesses. It is that simple. You don't have to fix the dark spots. Just let more light shine on them. And when we hear about these events, rays of light penetrating the universe, it does happen. You know, just like you hear about uh, gamma rays and, you know, violet rays, infra infrared and all, you know, these rays. There's also spirit rays. So something's happening. Something happened in 1111 and the harmonic convergence and the 2012 convergence. Something's happening during these times. It's not just superstition. These people that have, have, have honored and, and held that to be true, Mayans and so on, they've always known this. And the Israelites that said, there is no God but God. Even the, you know, in Islam, there's no God but Allah. There's no God but God. That's true. So we have to learn to see past the false gods, which means not things you worship like statues. That's literal. Do you know that worshiping false gods, because you guys, if I say, does anybody here worship, worship false gods? Yes, I got a golden calf right in the middle of my living room and I pay homage to it every day. It doesn't mean that. Ask yourself this. If God, if there is only God and God has power, God guides me, God influences me, God created me. All it means to not have false gods is this. Don't believe that anything else but God has power over you. Don't fear things, because that means you think they have power over you. But that includes genetics. Well, this is my genetics. Well, you just made a false god. You think genetics determines who you are? Well, my parents told me money doesn't grow on trees. That's a false god. You get what I'm saying? False gods are false beliefs. It's where we put things, power into things that don't have it. Maybe we'll save that, just that concept for another talk down the road. But just, just imagine this. Wait a second. All of the things, dietary laws, you know, the do's, the don'ts, the you can't, this and that, the genetics and the, it's all not just a lie or false, it's a false god. What should I do with that? I, let, me, let me check. I don't know. Let's see. Open the good book and it'll say, Thou shalt not have false gods before me. That's what it was talking about. Don't believe anything has power over you. But God. And God is love. Which means anytime we think there is anything but love and anything that has power over us but love, we're worshiping false gods. What do I do then? Get up and brush yourself off and say, not today. You know, I just was thinking, I'm, a, I'm the same age my mom was when she, stop. What a bunch of garbage that is. Get, and, you, and you have God actually saying, I support you. Get up and brush yourself off. It's not arrogant. It's righteous. Get up. Say no. Oh, you know, but my family, I was never raised with abundance and so we never, get up and brush off and say, what, what kind of hocus pocus is that? It, it's silly. I mean, have some attitude. Because God's like, yes, when we can say, no false gods. Make sense? Please take a few centering breaths. <coughs> mm. Dropping into that nice place inside. Just 
First inhaling, hearing the words, I am, and on the exhale, at peace. Don't just hear the words, affirm them. You know, really affirm them. This is the truth. I am at peace because I said so. Because I am commanding my own self to chill, relax. Tune into what you've heard that made sense. Whether it's the I choose not to, you know, honor, worship these false gods to feed false beliefs. It's time to clear and cleanse. Thank you. Thank you, the planets. Thank you, the stars. Thank you, God. Thank you, anything in this universe that supports my willingness to say, enough is enough, and goodbye to the past. And if the head says, Oh my God, what would my mother think if she knew I was saying goodbye to genetics and family ties and genetic patterns and social whatevers? What would my mother think? Just say to yourself, I am not going to worship a false God, meaning my mother that's going to condemn me like it's a God that sends you to hell. It would only be something she hasn't gotten yet, and I'll leave her to do that. The world, the planet, goes through upgrades every so often. And I will rise and go through those upgrades with her rather than resisting. I get this. This is about frequency changes. And any light work that I leave undone will become a residue I will have to deal with later. Residue becomes misaligned energies or energetic karma, illnesses, thought systems, something hitting me from out of the blue, blindsiding me, I don't need any of that. I will stay aligned with the frequency changes. This is a time when we start to draw new inspirations and ideas. As much as we're willing to clear and clean the old, here come new inspirations and ideas. Are we ready for that? Can we say no to the voices that try to hijack our mind and make us go back to the old ways? Tune into anything else you heard that made the most sense and breathe it in. And just, you get to answer, it's free will. I'm ready, here I am. But besides choosing I am ready, please consider I am ready and then here I am, God. Not just I'm ready, but shift it to the humble. Next, search your mind for misalignments. Anything that's out of alignment, out of congruency, what, what might there be? Search for anything. If you were to ask yourself, I'm ready, if you just say, I'm ready to launch into new levels of inspiration, new levels of guidance, here I go, I'm ready. Before you do, let the Holy Spirit of God help you spontaneously bring up any area that is most out of alignment. Belief systems, family patterns, racial patterns, whatever it happens to be, so that we can bid farewell to it. You will gain, not lose, when you say goodbye to it. For some people, the misalignments are, they preach good diet, pure diet to everyone, and yet, they still drink alcohol, 
and it makes no sense. They still smoke and it makes no sense. I'm not judging it. I'm saying, look and be careful. Whatever you're going to launch in the coming days, years, better make sure you're walking it. Because if you're not, it will be shown to you. If you don't get it the easy way, which means by your own honesty and responsible integrity, then it'll be blown up for you to see in the hard way. So whatever you speak, teach, preach, advocate, you have to become. So we close with that last bit. Just ask yourself, anything out of alignment? Why is it out of alignment? Be honest and give it to God. I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know how to fix it, so I give it to you, God. And the mother lifts it to the heavens to be purified, cleared, making the way more ready within us to be able to make that profound prayer of the divine feminine, which is, here I am. Here I am, God. Do with me what you will. Guide me and show me how to be the holy child you created. And just imagine, deep in the mind, rays, rays of star systems, rays of galactic light, rays of light beings, planets and so on, all aligning, dancing, with delight because of who you are. Imagine that. Imagine all of this light. The stars are not doing to, they're dancing, saying, humanity's awakening. And you can say, and I'm one of them. You can count on me. Count me in. I'm part of the light. I'm one with the light beings. I am a light worker. Hmm. I choose to be, I will to be, the Christ on earth. Three times together we will repeat, the God is, I am, we are, amen. Together, please. God is, I am, we are, amen. God is, I am, we are, amen. Once more. God is, I am, we are, amen. And so it is. Now let's just gradually stretch out, reacclimate, 